शिशि विलापक समंजलि कंटिन्यू फ्रॉम लास्ट टाइम वर्स 42 फ्रॉम शिशि विलापक समंजलि <clears throat> Second paragraph for translators. In this deep meditation, Sri Dasa Goswami serves Swamini by ornamenting her. In this verse he perceives the kajala seva the service of applying eyeliner and he is praying when can i worship these eyes that tightly bind the krishna elephant with even the slightest wink when can i worship them with eyeliner within the prayer lies the acquaintance with the mood swamini is always victorious over him hello hello swamini is always victorious over him hence she is known as jaya shri she she whose beauty consists of superiority and victory in gambling joking water games love games and others radha rani's superiority is evident for her playful glances are mohana's only support she need not to make any great movement with her eyes the slightest movement is enough to tightly bind the krishna elephant there is an abundance of her mata narasa infused in these playful glances that is why they have so much power over the transcendental beautiful right. Cupid of Vrindavan In Purva Raga condition 
Mohanatels Turadika Sakis. I became absorbed in staring at her spotless face. which is exquisitely sweet like a lotus flower. In an unseen way, this playful girl has bitten my heart. like a female snake. When an arrow-like glance is fired from her wonderful bow-like eyebrows, Mohana who is full of transcendental bliss, may even faint of ecstasy. Srila Prabodhananda Sarasati writes in Radha Rasa Sudhani. When can I worship that Radhika whose arrow-like glances cause the prince of Raja to faint? His yellow dhoti to fall off. His crown to loosen and his flute to fall from his hand with rasa. Shang is absorbed in relishing the wonderful beauty of your eyes. How beautiful your eyes are. The Creator sat down in solitude to create the pupils of her two eyes. Thinking them to be blue lotus flowers, the greedy bumblebee constantly runs for them. The beauty of Shiradika's eyes subdue. Mohana, the freely enjoying, mad, young elephant of Raja, who is otherwise uncontrollable. He is named Hari because he steals everyone's heart and mind with his extraordinary beauty and sweetness. Yeah. And he is named Krishna because he is all attractive and all blissful. He can only be controlled by pure 
selfless love. And there are four, uh, and there are different amounts of love that different devotees have for him. The amounts are classified in four levels. Anu means atomic. Apekshika, nuantika maya, more or less. Mahan, great. And Parama Mahan, the greatest love. Ordinary devotees have an atomic amount of prema. Narada Muni and other sages have more or less prema. Rajavasis have great love and only Radha Rani has the greatest love. <laughs> Mohan is controlled by his devotees according to the amount of love that they have for him. And Shiradika has the greatest love for him. Therefore, she controls him to the utmost. Madana Mohana, the enchanter of Cupid, is bound tightly by even Swamini's slightest glance. Like the king of elephants. When Mohana returns to his village in the afternoon, this Leela is called Uttara Goshta. Swamini stands on her moon tower to discreetly admire his beauty from a distance. Burning in the fire of separation from Mohan and considering each second that she is separated from him to last like a millennium. Her girlfriends show her, Oh Sundari, beautiful girl. Look, Vana Mali, Krishna who wears a garland of forest flowers. Vana Mali has come. Our hero does not look up. So Swamini with her heart filled with tremendous anguish of love and separation, 
stares fully at him. Drinking the boundless nectar of his form with the cups of her eyes. How many hundreds of emotions she reveals. The forest fire of separation that burned in her heart was extinguished simply by seeing Mohana. This time, Mohana looks back at her and both the lovers become shy. Shiradika pulls her veil straight and goes away. Then she stops and turns around again, thinking, before I go, I have to see him once more. And she casts a slight glance at him. It is a restless, momentary glance because she is very shy. She slightly smiles in a nervous way because she is so happy to see him. Her beautiful glance is anointed with bashfulness, shyness and humility. Mohana thirsts for that glance of Swamini. Swamini thinks to herself, I could not give anything to you during our midday fast. That is why her sidelong glance is also filled with humility. And she is very glad because she thinks at least one time I could see him. How many things is she telling him through her glances? Her glance is the great medicine that saves the life of Mohana, who also suffers of separation from her. This is the treasure of his meditation. Mohana keeps the sweetness of that glance carved on the slab of his heart.
without receiving this formal worship of her, Mohana could not survive. How many things she told me through this momentary glance. Mohana meditates. During Purvaraga, these glances madden him and keep him awake all night. Although Krishna controls everything, and everyone. These momentary glances control even him. Although innumerable gopis are eager for his sweet glance, Mohana eagerly desires Radhika's slightest beautiful glance. Sri Radha. The slightest gesture of these eyes Bewilder Mohana, the king of Alec. The sweetness of these eyes makes him helpless. Tulasi serves Swami and makes her relish the flavors of the remembrance of these pastimes as well, saying, Hey Swami. Can this maid servant not worship your eyes that control the Krishna elephant with even the slightest movement is such a goddess not offered puja? The Mahajanas say that this exchange of glances is even more relishable than the intimate pastimes. <laughs> that is why there is so much worship of Shirada's emotional, loving glances. In Chaitanya Charitamrita, Hey Bhava Yukta Deki Radhasya Nayana Sangha Mahoite Sukha Pai Koti Kuna when I look at Radhika's eyes and face in this mood, I feel a million times more happiness 
than when I directly unite with her. Tulasi said, I cannot live without worshipping the goddess of your eyes. Again, Chaitanya Charitam. Read again. A Bhava Yukta Deki Radasya Nayan Sangha Mahoite Sukha Pai Koti Guna. When I look at Radha's eyes, and face in this mood, I feel a million times more happiness than when I directly unite with her. Tulasi said, I cannot live without worshipping the goddess of your eyes. With what shall I formally worship these eyes of yours? With Kajal. It is not actually a kajal eyeliner, but the claral poison, putting Mohana's heart on fire. This is not just puja. This is complete puja. Tam Pujyai Syati. Not only your eyes will be worshipped, the Prasadi flowers will also stick to Mohana's lips. When Mohana sees this kata, he will kiss your eye so that the kata will stick on his lips. In this way, Mohana gets the leftover flowers of my puja on his lips. And my formal worship is complete. Sam puja. Tulasi puts eyeliner around Kishori Mani's eyes that extend up to her ears. How wonderful is the beauty of these kajal anointed eyes. Shri Vidyapata Takura Singh. Two lotus eyes painted with black and gem. <coughs> they are blinking 
and playing hide and seek. The Creator has tightly bound the startled Krishna Chakora to the ropes of these black Kajal borders. Srila Vishnavar Chakravarti writes, Seeing Shiradika's lotus like eyes with eyeliner on, it seems as if the enemy of the sun, dense darkness, had thought in this way. The power of the sun will fade. And he surrounded the friend of the sun, the lotus flowers, her eyes, as the eyeliner. But how amazing! Despite this, the luster of these lotus-like eyes simply continues forever. While Tulasi tells Swamini all this, She says to her anointed eyes, O oh eyes, if you ask me, why are you smearing this black stuff around us? The best of Shiradika's senses. while you adorn all her other limbs with gold and pearls. Then I will tell you, you don't want anything else but to see Mohana. And you are always eager for that. That is why I adorned you with this blackish kata that has the same color as Krishna. Krishna Ruchi Suddenly, the vision disappears, and Shiraguna Tadas laments, Hey Radhe, how wonderful are your glances. They attract everyone's eyes, friends and enemies alike. Even a momentary, playful, sidelong wink with these sweet eyes is making the king of elephants, Mohana, dizzy. He gets bound up and spins 
all around your lotus feet. Desiring your blissful company. When can I ornament your restless eyes that defeat the fickleness of the wagtail bird? With this crushed eyeliner at the end of verse 42. Any question of Dora Doranga? You explain. Radha Radha Gurudev and the old is. If you don't want to say Gurudev. No, I'm. I want to listen from all of them. Okay. Okay, good. I can say something just for introduction so that devotees can participate a little bit later. Yeah. So, so we can see and hear, hear and see actually how Raghunadas Goswami is his deep meditation is getting vision of Kajal Seva. So nice. So nice Seva. So intimate Seva. Kajal Seva. Putting the black line around the Radhika's beautiful eyes. And we can see that in many previous verses, Raghunatha is doing so expertly different sevas just on the Radhika's face and head. Usually devotees are meditating on the feet, but we can learn here that we can go upper to the Radhika's head, hair, pearl nose, lips, lipstick on the lips, ears, and so on, and so on, and so on. So in this way, According to the following, our Rupanuga Acharyas, we can go deeper, deeper in our personal meditation. And these words, but specifically commentary on these words, is so nice and in very detailed ways is explaining and helping us to go in this deeper budget. All proper moods of Raghunath, his bhava and action, chesta, we can see how they are combined here in, th in this very, very simple but very, very emotional seva. In the same time, he is worshipping formally Radhika Sais by putting this black eyeliner 
but in the same time he's giving and supporting Radhika's deep emotions and he is glorifying her eyes. So three different things he is doing. Formal worship, which is not actually formal, but Baba is saying formal. It's a full of balas. He is remembering Radhika's on the certain pastimes and he is glorifying the eyes of Radharani, the eyes who are so sweet, beautiful and powerful because of this sweetness and beautiful nature that her lover simply faint on just one glimpse of Radhika's beautiful eyes. It is said one of the name of Radhika is Kamala Nayani. Kamala means lotus, actually the petals of the lotus and Nayana eyes but this is not ordinary eyes this kind of Nayana is the long eyes and is described they are coming up to the ear this kind of eyes Kamala Nayani Tulasi is worshipping and there is a sentence where Tulasi is saying I cannot live without worshipping the goddess of your eyes this is the mood of Manjari Hinkar. I cannot live without worshipping What is the use of my life? What is the use of my existence? What is the use of all mercy which I received? If I cannot worship and glorify your beautiful eyes, my dear Radha. And this kind of puja is the Prema Puja. And Baba is explaining here what does it mean? It means complete Puja. Why is complete? Because there's different reasons why Tulasi is doing also this Kajal Seva. She wants that Radhika size becomes so attractive, very attractive to Mohan, so that he cannot resist then to put his lips on that eyes. And in that moment, Black Kajal is marked on his lips. Then his Manjari is completely happy because her Seva is complete. Tulasi made perfectly this line around the radical size but Mohan he destroyed and this is the perfection of Seva complete yeah. Seva
And this idea is so fortunate that Andi is looking to Mohan. No other one desire to see. This is the real life. When he is only one to see, one pointed to the goal. So if we not pray to this eyes, how our life will one pointed in our life. Now we will fix up. See that. Yeah? Yes, Gurudev, thank you. Through the eyes are coming, mercy are coming. This is one way I remember, I just now remember somewhere, I forgot, but somewhere in Bhagavatam it says that there's different kinds of mercy, uh, uh, not kinds of mercy, different ways of mercy is going through. One way how we receive the mercy is through the eyes. Yeah. Through the eyes of Guru, through the eyes of Vaishnavas, through the eyes of Ishtadev. When air is start drinking, then eyes start talking. Yes. Eyes talking and ears are drinking. When he still he come to the point for drinking from the air, then I just start talking. And this is complete Shravanam. Yeah. When ears are drinking, and immediately everything appears in the eyes, in the screen of the mind. So, yeah. so Gurudev, there is one word which is say purvaraga kind of separation and it's very often written in commentaries because it's very tightly connected with lilas Can you explain a little bit about this subject? Or How intense our love and feeling good? <coughs> it comes also. We are together. They are together but they start feeling separate. Because to think that they will go after ten minutes separate, or one hour after they will go, they start feeling, trying each other. They are together. There is a many, many sweet pastimes happening that they are together. Intense love becomes so intense, so deep that they, they cannot want to go to think that they will be separated. But the circumstances make them to separate. And 
when they separate, then they they feel that they are in union, and when they are together, they feel that they are separate. Yeah. Very Jagdis Prabhu. Uh -uh. Yeah. So this is Prem Bhakti. Yeah. There is one there is one sentence, Guru Dev here. In the commentary, during Purva Raga, these glances, Madan Krishna, Madan Krishna, and keep him awake all night. You see? <laughs> Mahaprabhu. Yes. When Vishnu Priya knows that Mahaprabhu. Prabhu will leave to me. Whole night she is wake up to watching that Mahaprabhu is not gone. She is sleeping, then Vishnu Priya binds from her dhoti, sari to his dhoti. So, so and this is madness in the intense love. In efforts. Madness is completely natural. No, that, kind of that to receive someone, Krishna waiting for Krishna that is coming, and Krishna is half an hour late. Radha starts thinking, maybe something happened. Some. I uh, hear. He, he, he has a some problem. Many, many bad things are done. Bad thing, not good thing. She is worrying. She, uh, and shivering. By the word that what happened. And suffering. Yes. Madness of the dark. Unmada. So these hmm? different so these different passing emotions yeah. are going They're like a way. Yes. Man. Yeah. Yeah. Sri Yes. Yeah. Maybe someone else yeah. wants to share something, please. I can think about it in speech, yeah. Radhe, Radhe. Yeah. Oh, what up? Hey, Radhe, Radhe. You hear okay? I'm on the street here, so I don't know. <laughs> you are in the honest Radhe, Radhe. Yeah, yeah. Radhe, Radhe, Radhe. There's Radhe, such a... Um, in this commentary by Anathadas Babaji, there's such an important lesson about um, the power of love. Uh -huh. the, the power of love of, um, of Radhika. 
You know, when we think uh, when we think about love in in Maya in the West, we think about uh, fear. We're afraid. We're vulnerable. We're afraid of what the our lover will hurt us with. But Ananda Das Babaji says that in spiritual love, it's the opposite. That the power we have corresponds to the love we give. So the, the Mandaris have much power for their love for Radhika, and the Radhika is all powerful over Krishna, over Mohan, because of the love she gives. Not because of the love she takes, but because of the love she gives. This is the source of her power and why Mohan is so uh, so enamored with, with her, surrenders to her indeed. Radha. Yeah, beautiful new subject, you say. More highest and more beautiful. Recorded, given the Radha Dasyam, this is the real Gaurachanda, remember. Read, uh, write the words, what is uh, the part. I will write, I'm writing every day. <laughs> No, rather that. Um, okay. This very good. Repeat it. Repeat now. This realization, this realization. Wow. Okay. I write in the rather that. Um. But repeat for us. I can. I want to listen again. Okay. It's the message about. Uh, the power of spiritual love, of divine love. In, um, in, Ma in Maya, when we love in Maya, when we love in the West and the way we love in everyday life, we associate it with fear, with being vulnerable, with being fragile, with being afraid of what our lover will hurt us with. But Ananda Das Babaji says, that it's the opposite in spiritual, in divine love. That the, the power we have corresponds to the love that we give. The more love we give, the more spiritual power we have. And so the, the Manjaris, the Kinkaris, when they're loving the Radha, they're, they're, they have much power in the spiritual world. And that other's power is the greatest because her love for Mohan is the greatest. So she has endless power because she has endless love that she gives. It's the love we give that gives us power and not the love that we fear to not receive from others. Wow. Very happy. Rade, rade. Very beautiful. Very good day. Yeah. Just a walking. Eyes is open. Feet is moving. But we are in the meditation. Open eyes meditation. Bodies are moving, but meditation and realization can come. There are. Thank you. Like internet is connected, more clear picture will come, more clear voice will come. Internet is a weak, we cannot see. 
the divine and we cannot face in the voice. There are so our connection has to strong in our Manjari Saru to Swami. Is there someone else who wants to share? Please devote this. Or if you have some question. It will be nice to hear from you. Rasaradi? Yes, please. Uh, please. Radhi, Radhi. Uh, please. I want to tell I want to tell one thing. Is love is a sacrifice made by a by someone without asking anything in return that the parents does to the children and then doesn't expect anything from the children later on in some life. Is that uh, a pure love? But uh, mother and father give more pure love. But there is no ex expectation of return of something. That is purity. So you can see in father and mother. Right? Yeah. But more above more higher if you want to go. That divinity, more divinity, divine, than it was in the form of Jesus. You see, Jesus also say, I am a son. Then what he say to the God, he say, you are my father. This my father accepting, not God accepting, is more is a, is more higher. Deep relation was there, and is he totally fit in his son at the sun with fun. So this is his whole active active. He was whole life active for who for the divine father. And he said all is my neighbor, my family. And everybody recognized him because of this divine connection permanently fixed in one point. <laughs> so divine divine thing is little higher, but this we say mother and father is the teacher of divine love. They teach us. Yes, are, right? But we have to go more higher to feel it. Then you yes, can have this relation with God. 
with the Almighty. That is more speciality. Clear? Yes, sir. Yes, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj Ji. Thank you. Are you from? Kripa Sindhu, Maharaj Ji. Okay, okay. Yeah. Kripa Sindhu, Maharaj Ji. Acha, Chi, everything. Gaurvani is there, he will share something. He is more, more happy. Labanga, it's Pucci microphone, Molint. Labanga. Bangaji, Fuji microphone. Goravani is translating Guru Dev. Oh, yeah. okay. In the sharing, the German class, no translation. Others arranged to translate. Yes, there is someone who likes, but you like. Arigatou Gosaimas, Javans. Yeah. I, I like to share a small, small feeling. Okay. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Here we see, we read how, how Manjri is waiting that her steva will be destroyed in a way. That some lila will happen and her steva will be all, kajal will be all spoiled. The, all the flowers will fall down. All wow, the... very nice, beautiful. This is Manjari. Wow. Manjari, see, only to hear Manjari. Yeah, very nice. <laughs> Sometimes here in this world, we, we try to do some material seva, let's say, and then if some maybe child come and let's say he spilled the, the milk we want to offer, we get angry or something and Manjari only waits, oh, when my seva will be destroyed, <laughs> so I can serve her. Yay, nice, beautiful. For most I'm coming. No, sir. Wow. You see? You see a full of rasikas. Gauravani also like very much Kurushia. Yes. <laughs> yeah. no. So devotees, <laughs> it's up to you, please do something, say something, <laughs> turn the nectar. Just simple thing, it's not important to speak so long, whoever wants. what we feel. Do we actually 
feel connection with Raghunatha's feeling. And how much is important it? Please. Yes, my dear praise to everybody and we are we are still missing you all here. Uh, that you come and visit us. No, it's so beautiful. Actually, it's it's all a teaching. When we re when we hear how Gurudev said in, at the beginning how one pointed is is Radharani to Mohan. Actually, that's a teaching for us to be like she's one pointed to Mohan, and when she sings. <laughs> and when she sings, you are the one, you are the only, you are the only one. We also sing this, right? You are the one, you are the only and you are the one. That is, uh, we focus totally on Radharani's lotus feet when we say this. So she teaches us through her beautiful behavior, through her love, how we can also be one-pointed. And uh, this is what I feel here very much when Ananda Das Babaji is talking about, in another verse, about Swabhav, which means nature, the nature of everybody. So we all have a certain nature, and if we meditate on that nature on on the colors on on behaviors and all these things then we come to that connection which brings us actually to anubhav which means realization or experience right so that is what is actually this one pointness means that you have nothing else that's it only Radha. This is, if that enters, if that comes through this feeling that we don't want to have anything anymore in our heart, it's really there. If it is really there and manifests, if there is really nothing anymore, nothing, only her, then that makes us a shadow to Radha. A shadow to her behavior towards Mohan. And that is the highest form of Anurag. <clears throat> so this Anubhav brings us to Anurag. Anurag, which means both sided and always fresh. We are together with Radha, and it's not that we are bored there now, it's always new. Every moment is new. We we are together and we are. Um, also explain about Anubhav. Me, Indeed, nobody understands. Anubhav. You have to say what is Anubhav. Yeah, Anubhav is experience yes. and the realization of somebody else. I tried to, uh, to, to explain that before, but I explain it again. When you have the realization about something, because first, it is described as an imagination, then comes a revelation, and then comes the realization. So first image, imagination, there is the word image inside, and that means a picture. So you start to see everything in pictures. Like you see a picture and immediately you connect it with, 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 with Radha, immediately. And that makes, that makes your anurag working because it's not only one-sided, because Radharani is from the beginning of our lives with us. Well, at least I, I didn't notice it, so I made a lot of different things in this world, but then when it comes that you also respond to that feeling she has towards you, then it's anurag. <laughs> 
then it's both sided. Anyway, this is what I feel there in that in that verse when we heard about that one pointedness. That what came to my heart to tell you and to share with you. Thank you so much, Radhe Radhe, Jai Ho. Here you are. Guru Dev, uh, I would like to read and to add a little bit what uh, Raguna say about this Anubhav. Actually, yeah. very nice. Very nice. Because before Anubhav, I will explain later. We have to know what is Vibhav. Mm. Yeah. And this is the cause, inner cause of tasting the Rati. Yeah. Yeah. So, what is this cause? Hero and heroine. Mm. And when devotee is very fixed deeply with full his heart in his Ishtadev, in Radhika, mm -hmm. this is the cause of his deep emotions. She is the cause of deep emotions. And what's happening then? Then it's happening Anubhav. She is starting to dance. She is starting to talk. She is, he is starting to, to speak about his Ishtade. He is starting even to cry. Outside, symptoms are coming out. Mm. Because of great Rati, great Bhava, emotions which are coming out, he cannot hold it. And this Anubhav actually is helping devotee to express yeah. the feelings, but also attracting Ishtadev even more for like Anurag to respond mm -hmm. on devotee's reaction. Yeah. And this is the exchange, like Raguna says, full of Ranurag, always fresh. Marina. And so on and so on. So you're not explainable. Anubhav. Anubhav, Guru, as I know, I don't know so much, but Anubhav is outside expression of inner emotions. Yeah. And this is in the, let's, we can say, on the conscious way. Rupa Goswami, I think that he is comparing this Anubhav expressions of outside emotions, like a dancing, like a singing, in completely joyful mood. Even crying. Yeah. He's comparing it with Ashta Sattvika Bhavas. Yeah. And he said, Ashta Sattvika Bhavas, it's eight symptoms of complete ecstasy. Mm. Yeah. And this yeah. kind and this kind of symptoms are coming spontaneously. Devotee cannot hold it. It's not on the conscious way. So we have this Anubhav symptoms when he is dancing, crying, singing, talking. 
and he is conscious. But when other symptoms are more intense, then he is losing consciousness. He is not aware that he is crying. So it's a deep subject matter. I will suggest devotees to read Jaiva Dharma. Where Bhaktivinoda Thakur is very nicely and shortly explaining all these subjects and precisely. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Huh? So on, yeah. Check, check, check. Well, it's a so nice. This side long glances actually are expressions of Anubhav. Wow. Because Radhika is showing how much she's his her heart is focused on her lover. Hidingly. Hidingly, yes. She is showing, but hidingly. <laughs> so, side the long glance she is using. Yes. From hide she is looking. Yes. Nobody understands what she is doing. No. When you have it, anyone has an intense love and is a public meeting, you hiding him. Really want to see your lover. Eyes goes always there. So that has to be unhow. We have to realize it to feel it. Uh, Gurudev Goravani, he just sent one short message. He is a pandit by he yeah. to translate because to keep silent. Is it his question? Actually, this is a question. Is it also kind of exchange of feelings on the pandit. transcendental platform? Yes. Only on transcendental. Only that. Yes. This is very hiding, very, very confidential. Yeah. Yes. You, you not talk normal <clears throat> like others. Why are you not talk normal? Because there is something more there. Talking from side and front. Talking indirectly, something, something I'm talking, but the meaning is something else. Only two can understand. Third will not understand. It's beyond speaking, Gurudev. It's it's beyond language. It's it's beyond words. It has to be. Yeah. experienced. No, no, talking also. By talking to others, we use the words that only two persons can understand, doer and receiving person. 
the masses of that world only to understand. Mm. Who loves and who receives the love. Private language. Ah, yeah. And that is our all scripture is written like that. Ah. Even Bhagavad Gita is written by Prabhupada like this. <laughs> yeah, because this is Parakiyabhav. Yes, this is the, this is the confirmation, the last word of the Bhagavad Gita is plays a given potency. Twenty years practice, twenty-five years practice, devotee come to me, I ask what is the pleasure giving potency? This is for the devotees who give the pleasure by the service. Then those devotees are talking to Prabhupada on that. I said, okay, thank you. <laughs> they cannot say Radha because they, they no reach that point. And you see, the essence of the writer of the last word is a meaning in a start something he writes is a meaning. In the center something he writes is a big meaning. This is the meaning of the book writer, the goal of writing. And last conclusion of that book is a meaningful. Right or not? Yes, good. Right, Guru Dev, when, but when I think when I'm writing about about the divine things, I feel like it happens only when the when the book writes me, if you understand. Not yeah. when I think with, I don't think with my brain and then I write, it's that the book writes in me. It, yeah. It's beyond me. Yeah. Yes, beyond us. We are not a writer. We are holding the pen and written by someone else. Exactly. Yes. We are not the writer, yeah. we are the written. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. We are the fewer. Yes. Thank you for sharing today. Very nice, deep subject. We have one week time to meditate it.